Hi there, good afternoon. Today we will go through the poem after denim. It's one of the five poems that you have for your ICSE curriculum in class nine. Uh, this is a lengthy poem, but it's a very very easy poem. After Blenheim, Blenheim is a place somewhere in uh, in Europe. What happened is there was a war which was waged between the English and the French, in which the English came out victorious. French they lost. And 60, 70, 80 years after, later, I mean, later, two kids, siblings, they were playing in the field. While playing, they came across an object which was round, shiny, and big. They could not identify it. What was it? So they took it to their grandfather. Now, grandfather name is old Casper. Casper. So Casper identified it. He apparently identified it. Uh, he understood, he identified it as a skull. However, his approach was quite casual. The moment he said it's a skull, the children, they grew, the kids, they grew curious. They wanted to know the full story behind the skull. So, old Casper, in a very casual manner, he described the war and uh, he also said that there are plenty of skulls lying, buried, lying underneath the soil. We often come across while plowing. And uh, then the children grew more curious. They wanted to know what, why the war was waged. What is the purpose of the war? Old Casper could not give them a proper justification why the war was waged. He only remembers the fact that he was told that it was a famous victory for the English, and therefore he clings on to that notion that it's a famous victory. It was a famous victory. People sacrificed. Soldiers sacrificed because of the famous victory, towards the famous victory. And uh, this is what the poem is all about. It's a ballad. This poem is a ballad. Ballad is a poem or a biblical poem where you will find three things, the three features you will uh, find common. Number one, it, uh, speak, it speaks about ordinary people doing some extraordinary things, extraordinary things, I mean, some unusual adventures, goes through some unusual adventures. Here, the English, actually 10,000 English, English soldiers were lost and 30,000 French soldiers were lost. Now, it's an incredible victory for the English. So, that's an unusual adventure, an extraordinary achievement. Point number one. Point number two is, uh, a ballad will revolve around an incident which is tragic, whether it's 10,000 people who lost their lives or 30,000 people lost their lives. So that's the tragic event around which this poem will revolve. And number three, in a ballad you will find you will find dialogues and repetition. We will find Casper will be repeating this victory preceding by like words like great, famous. This is also an example of a, a poem to be remembered for a ballad. Let's get into the poem. It was a summer evening. Old Casper's work was done and he before his cottage door was sitting in the sun. And by him sported on the green his little child, his little grandchild, Wilhelm. So three characters, Casper and his two uh, grandchildren, Wilhelm and uh, Peter King. So these two, I mean, these two kids will uh, symbolizes, you know, curiosity, purity, innocence. Whereas old Casper will represent experience, knowledge. So in the first stanza, the poet is actually uh, giving us the setting, the setting of the uh, where the three persons are. Uh, it's a summer evening. It's a very calm summer evening. Very picturesque evening. Old Casper, after finishing his work, he was done, he was relaxing, and the children, they were playing, sported, he was playing on the green. Green, uh, again, uh, green is a figure of speech, I mean, it's, it's metallic. Metallic is a figure of speech here, because the green will, the word green will give you the idea of an entire green field. So, one word meaning a uh, picture of an entire object. And little grandchild with him, his little grandchild with him, they are playing. So, uh, the setting is quite pastoral and calm and serene and beautiful. Second paragraph. She saw her brother Peter King roll something large and round 
which we decided a rivulet. Rivulet mean of, means of a small stream, a river, small, small stream or river. In playing there had found, he came to ask what he had found that's so large and smooth and round. Again, the usage of the conjunction and its uh, policy written. Okay. Now, this second stanza gives us, uh, arouses the reader's curiosity. What did the kids find? Which is large, smooth and round. Third stanza, old Casper took it from the boy who stood expected by him. And then the old man shook his head with a natural sigh. Tis some poor fellow's skull, said he, who fell in the great victory. Now, the, the innocence, the calmness, the serenity which we found in the setting, the first two stanzas is suddenly getting replaced by something horrific when we realize that it's actually the round object is actually a skull. Then, how about the old man shook his head with a and with a natural sigh? This is important, natural sigh. Sigh is an expression of sadness. Here, sigh is an expression of relief. And natural because he, 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 he seemed to be unwatered, un undisturbed, unworried when he saw the skull because it's a common occurrence to him. Okay, and uh, skull is also important because uh, it's, it's significant because uh, skull harbors are great. Whoever decides to go to a war, whoever decides to wage a war, first thinks here, human brain. Hmm. And who fell in a great victory. Now, this is the first instance, great victory. This is the first instance where we will find that the poet is emphasizing on the ignorance of the common men like Casper towards the reality of the world. Yeah, towards the reality of the world. And uh, this will also uh, support the notion like we have heard leaders make the decision and who suffers? The soldiers who are fighting in the front line or the civilians. Then, then uh, stands aboard, I find them in the garden for there is many here about and often when I go to plough, the ploughshare turns them out. Now ploughshare is the device with which uh, a ploughing is done. For many thousand men, say he, were slain, slain used to kill in the great victory. Now this, this line, for many thousand men, say he were slain uh, in the great victory. So many thousand skulls must be there underneath somewhere, under the soil. Uh, and this gives us the image that these soldiers were forgotten. You know, that they are unnoticed, they were forgotten, not even given a proper burial. And uh, where slain in the great victory, he still finds, Casper still finds a sense of pride, as I said, and uh, uh, he believes the soldiers who sacrificed their lives did not go, uh, their sacrifice did not go in vain. And this actually shows, you know, he, he, he thinks there is a sheer patriotism if you fight for your country. This actually shows, you know, the the whole nationalism which we harbor, we as a commoners, we harbor. And uh, also this shows the vulnerability, the meaning, the, how vulnerable a human life is. You know, they lie buried there for decades and thousands in number. Now tell us what twas all about. Twas is an archive word. Young Peter King, he cries, and little Wilhelmin looks up with wonder waiting eyes. Again, wonder waiting WW. Uh, uh, that's a uh, alliteration. Now tell us all about the war and what they fought each other for. Now these kids, they they were curious. They, uh, grandpa speaking about the war. So to them, war is something which is must be uh, something which is uh, adventurous. You know, they they are presenting here a sense of uh, curiosity and uh, what should I say? Uh, young Peter King he cries with. And little Wilbin looks up with wonder waiting eyes. So they find some kind of enthusiasm, some kind of thrill uh, in Grandpa's soul. And uh, uh, therefore they ask me, uh, now tell us all about, tell us about the war and what they fought each other for. Now they are asking about the purpose. Grandpa, what is the purpose behind the war? This is important. It was the English, Casper cried, who put the French to rout, rout means to drive away. Defeated, French were defeated. But what they fought each other for, I could not well make out. But everybody said, quoth he, that to us a famous victory, human beings are like parrot. We will utter what we, we are instructed to utter. 
and uh, uh, you know every time he says that it was a famous victory it's like uh, he shows the common man's belief in associating uh, uh, you know the, the heroic ideals with the war he is frank enough he is frank enough to admit that i could not well make out what is the reason behind waging the war okay he could not make out so this shows the purpose is irrelevant is insignificant and it is significant task of the number so the purpose is forgotten the purpose is forgotten the result is remembered my father lived at blenheim then yon little stream hard by yon means yonder means beside a little uh, 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 little stream little river the bird is dwelling to the ground now here he is tries to recollect the horrific scenarios and these scenarios are common in every war uh, uh, and he was forced to fly so with his wife and child he fled nor had he where the rest where to re uh, rest his head so like he had to migrate his entire family had to migrate because they uh, became homeless they became homeless and you know, Uh, these these scenarios like burning the dwellings, burning down buildings, people uh, forcefully had to shift from one place to another. These are common scenarios which you will find in every war. Uh, this actually reminds me of that uh, idiot, Muhammad uh, Bhaktiya, the founder of Khalij Khilji dynasty. I don't remember that, but uh, he wanted to rule over Bengal and eastern India during his conquest. What he did? He Burned, he burned down uh, Nalanda University and the, uh, the 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 library, the library of Nalanda University kept burning for nine days. Can you fancy that? For nine days, a library kept on burning books. So how how resourceful was that library at that time? Anyway, with fire and so the country round was wasted far and wide. Fire and so both are. Symbols of cruelty huh? was wasted far and wide, wasted far and wide, disrupted to a long distance, to a great distance, and many a child, child and mother there, and newborn baby died. Now, the he continues to share the pictures of gruesomeness, you know, death, horror, shock. A child and mother means pregnant, pregnant women. So pregnant women were killed. Then newborn baby died. Newborn baby uh, were killed. Newborn baby also uh, killing newborn baby means what? Death of innocence. But things like that, you know, must be at every famous victory. So this is the common sentiment of the masses. Masses are lured into believing that the winning is important. You know, the after effect of what the winning is important, the result is important. What actual benefit does a war brings is not important. Okay. Now they say it was a shocking sight after the field was won, after the battlefield was won. For many thousand bodies here lay rotting in the sun, but things like that, you know, must be after a famous victory. So the image, the image of uh, many thousand body uh, bodies, thousand bodies lying uh, rotting under the sun, this shows that the war not only takes away human lives, it takes away human dignity also. Great praise the Duke of Marlborough's won. And our good prince Eugene, why it was a very good thing. Say it will be many. Nay, nay, my little girl, both he was a famous victory. So now we uh, know who uh, the two heroes who uh, brought about glory. Now who won for the British for the English side? Duke of Marlborough and Prince Eugene. Now why it was uh, it was a very wicked thing. This the child kids they were confused. See, you have to understand they are little kids. This Casper only must have taught them what is good, what is bad, what is love, what is hate. Using that judgment, they could not figure out the justification of the war. They could not figure out why uh, their grandpa is actually praising someone who is responsible for death of thousands. And everybody praised the Duke who this last stanza, and everybody praised the Duke who this great fight did win. But what good came of it at last? Both little bit of it. Why that I could tell, say he was, but was a famous victory. So he still couldn't find the justification, the purpose of the war, or what led to the war. So this he continues his casual approach. Okay? His casual approach and his carelessness, his ignorance is actually resembling the fact, resembling today's leaders who, who terms 
who has uh, derived a term like um, to, to define people who are losing their lives in the war and the term is collateral damage. So let us find how famous the victory was. Then the land was wasted far and wide, so destruction continued to a great extent. Childing mother were killed. Pregnant mother were killed. Newborn baby, infants were killed. Uh, thousand bodies lay rotting. So loss of dignity as well. Can be thousand, can be millions, can be hundred, can be tens. Thousand bodies lay rotting unnoticed. All this at the cost of a famous or great victory. This brings us to the end of the poem. Thank you.